Right, so in today's video, it's going to be slightly different to the usual content because what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be talking all about the different equipment you need if you're first getting into lawn care. Now, I have had a few people comment about this recently, about what sort of lawnmower should you buy, what sort of tools you need, and whether certain things are actually relevant to have. So I'm going to talk today about the equipment that I have, why I've got the equipment that I've got, and whether I think it's necessary to actually take up lawn care as a bit of a hobby. So we'll start with the bare necessities of all, which is the lawnmower. Because what you can't do is you can't really get into lawn care unless you can actually cut your lawn. Now, neither of these lawnmowers are particularly cheap. The cheaper of the two is the Bosch, and then the Hater is a little bit more on the expensive side. Now, I didn't start out with lawnmowers like this. I started out with a Challenge lawnmower from Argos, which cost, I think it was about 30, 40 pound at the time. Uh, so really cheap. What used to happen is the wheels at the front used to bend outwards and then you'd have to like bend them again. It was an absolute nightmare. And you had to, to like, change the height of the mower. You had to take the wheels off the front and off the back. And then you had to change them manually and adjust the, the actual position. So if you are going to get into lawn care, I wouldn't suggest starting with something like that because of the impracticalities of having a lawnmower that's that cheap. However, if that's all that you know you can afford within your budget, then go for it. I mean, it does what these both do. It cuts the grass. You know, that's essentially what you want your lawnmower to do. Uh, however, it wasn't the best. Then after I got that one, I bought a Ferrex lawnmower from Aldi, which was, I think, about 70, 75 pounds at the time, and that did a cracking job. It had a rear roller on the back, it had quite a wide deck, so, you know, it took less time to actually cut the entire lawn. The only sort of downside to it was the fact that it was corded. Now, you will see a massive disparity in the prices of lawnmowers if, if compared to whether it's corded or cordless. Cordless lawnmowers tend to go for around about twice the price of a corded mower. And the main reason behind that is just because the actual price of the battery. Uh, the price of the battery alone is sometimes half, if not even more than that, of you know, the actual product that you're buying. So after the Ferrex, I bought the Bosch, and this lawnmower has served me great over the past few years. It is a little bit expensive. It's about 330, 340 pounds, something around that region. Could be more, could be less. Might be more now, given you know the economy as it stands but it is an absolutely cracking mower. It comes with a four amp hour battery, 36 volts, and this battery lasts absolutely ages. I'm telling you, it's, um, I'd usually get about a week and a half's worth of cutting out of this lawnmower on one charge, and that's with cutting every grass maybe three or four times over that week and a half, so, you know, really not bad for what it can do. Now, one thing I would sort of look out for with a lawnmower is being able to adjust the height easily. So, for example, with this one, you just have to move the lever up and down. You can change the settings quite easily, uh, and it just, it, it saves you a lot of faffing about. With a lot of the cheap mowers, like I said before, you haven't to take the wheels off. It's just a nightmare. It's not really worth your time. But something like this, you know, can do the job perfectly. And the advantage of having something that's cordless, you can just put it straight into your garage or your shed. And then the next time you want to mow, there's no like setup. It's literally pull it out and off you go. You can just start mowing. And after you've done every single cut, all you've got to do is get your battery, check the charge. And if it's on one bar, get it on charge. So the Bosch, that would suit nearly anybody. You can get them with different sizes of decks and things, um, but it's definitely worth the investment. Now, this is the Hater Hawk, which I wouldn't necessarily recommend to someone who's completely new to lawn care. I mean, unless your budget's massive, then, you know, by all means, buy whatever you want. Now, it is a better lawnmower, and it comes with a significantly higher price too. So I think I picked this up for, I think it was about 580 when you take into account the actual delivery fee as well. Uh, but the difference between this and the Bosch, this one's got a more powerful battery. So instead of being 36 volts, it is 60 volts. However, it is a smaller ampage, but you can get these with larger batteries they last longer but but the sizes of my lawns i mean if you've seen any of my videos you know they're not massive so that does the job for what it's worth what's good about this is the fact that it's got a rear roller on the back instead of two individual wheels now the bosch does have a rear roller much smaller whereas this one doesn't have any wheels on and let me show you what i mean so you can see it's got two front wheels uh, right at the front of the machine but at the back instead of having two wheels like most mowers do it's just got a singular rear roller now this is made of plastic but it's proper heavy duty and the actual lawnmower weighs a lot more than what the bosch does so a lot of pressure is on this rear roller at the back 
and that's what's giving you those lovely lawn stripes. And again, it's got loads of different height adjustments. This one you can actually do with one hand, nice and easy just to adjust the height of the mower, which isn't too bad. But like I said, it's more of a premium product, this. It's like going from, you know, a 200 pound Android phone to getting a 800 pound iPhone. It still does the same job, but the expensive one is a little bit better, but it's not a massive, massive difference. So that's lawn mowers. Now, I didn't mention this at the start of the video. I don't think I did anyway, but I put these things in order of what I think are the most important things you should be buying. So obviously the first thing is the lawnmower, but I think the second thing you need to do is actually pick yourself up a strimmer. Now, when I first got my first lawnmower, I didn't buy a strimmer. I bought some like, um, whatever, I can't think what they're called, like hedge cutters, but not. There's a name, there's a, there's a name out there, I'm not 100% familiar with it right off the top of my head now. But I used to go around the entire lawn, cutting everything by hand, and it was an absolute nightmare. But getting a strimmer is a massive game changer. Ideally, you want to get one that's cordless. So, for example, this has an 18 volt battery. It's only one and a half amps, so it doesn't last a particularly long time, but I've got two of these. So one dies, you can just swap them out. There's a lot of Bosch products that take this battery. So if you're someone who doesn't want to be going out and buying loads of different products with loads of different batteries, costing a fortune you can buy things like this bear which just means you don't come with a battery and you can use a battery from something else that you've got to actually power the thing too it's not very powerful if it gets lots of you know you're having to wade through lots of thick grass it can find it pretty difficult however you know for the, what it is it does the job as long as you're not letting your lawn turn into a massive jungle you'd be fine with something like this. This was under 100 pounds when I bought it. I think it was around about 70-ish pounds, 60 pounds, maybe even less, to be honest. Uh, that's without the battery, because uh, I had the battery with a, uh, a drill before this, so that came with two. But what is also quite cool is you can change the adjustments of the handle to make it more comfortable for yourself. And also, uh, something else that is pretty decent about this is that you can use it as a regular strimmer like this, but then there's a button up at the top, and if you press that in, you can twist it round and that enables you then to get nice clean edges on your lawn. So that's a feature that is probably worth looking at if you are looking to buy yourself a strimmer. Then I'd say after your lawnmower and your strimmer, the third most important thing, in my opinion anyway, is actually getting yourself a scarifier. Now you can buy hand scarifiers, but you'll find that once you use it for about five or 10 minutes, your back's gonna start to hurt, your arms will be tired, your legs will be tired. And if you've got a particularly big garden, you're not gonna have a very good time scarifying it. However, something like this, an electric scarifier, can make that job a whole lot easier. Now, this is the Ferrex one that I've had for around about two and a half years. It's, uh, in fact, the first video I posted on this channel was a review of this. And do you know what? It's a cracking piece of kit. I've used it so many times for loads of different um, renovation projects. And what's pretty cool, it comes with two different attachments. It has this one, which it almost advertises as an aerator. is isn't really an aerator. It's basically a power rake. So it's just got these little spring turns on it. And what they do is they help, you know, pull any thatch to the surface that's already loose, or it'll pull any sort of leaves and dead matter up to the top. If you've got any weed grasses, these are really good at sort of bringing those to the surface so that you can go across with your lawnmower and nick them off. However, this isn't the most important attachment it comes with that would be this. And this is the actual scarifier, so you can see it's got all these little blades on it. And the idea is, is as it rotates into the ground, it digs into the soil layer below and it rips out any of that thatch and they are quite useful. The only thing is with this, is when you actually scarify your lawn with an electric scarifier, it looks pretty dreadful, like it can look really bad. And it's that, you know, the old phrase of sometimes things have to look worse before they can look better. And that's exactly what the Scarifier does. However, it lets your lawn breathe. It gives you a chance to overseed and fertilize quite well. And overall, it's a cracking piece of kit. So this was about 70 pounds when I bought it. Everything seems to be 70 pounds at the moment. I might be misremembering things, uh, but I think this was about 70 quid when I got it. In nowadays economy, it's probably about 100, who knows? But if you can pick up something similar, yeah, I think, I'm not sure if they sell this one anymore in Aldi, but I know you can get different brands and the likes of Screwfix and Tool Station for, for a similar price. But this is definitely something that's worth buying. Also, if you're getting a scarifier, then the next thing I definitely think you should be buying is a leaf rake. Now, if you get yourself a leaf rake, what this is really good at doing is once you've scarified your lawn, you're gonna, you usually get like a 
grass collection box on the back which you know collects most of the thatch but quite a lot of it still ends up on the lawn and something like this really makes your life a whole lot easier when it comes to raking it up if you try and use it like a springtime rake which have those little tiny needles on similar to what i showed you on the scarifier before all that's going to do is when you try and rake your grass it's going to rake through the thatch and it's not actually going to be dragging it towards you which is going to make your life a whole lot more difficult whereas these they almost bounce when you scrape it across the lawn and it just helps to drag anything towards you quite easily and with it being plastic too it's not going to do any damage to your lawn as long as you're quite soft when you're going across it so if you're scarifying you need to get yourself a leaf rake. These, I mean, you can get them from anywhere, from probably a fiver to 20 quid, depending on uh, where you go. So we've had the lawnmower, the strimmer, the scarifier, the leaf rake, and then probably, which is, I'd say this is maybe on par with the scarifier, is getting yourself one of these, which is a weed pulling tool. Now it's the Fiskars one, the Fiskars Exact, and this is completely invaluable. The way it works is you almost stab it into the ground with those teeth, and then put your foot there, you pull back, and it almost like pinches the uh, the weed and pulls out most of the root, if not all of it. Now, sometimes it does, and it does advertise it as pulling the entire root out. But sometimes it does leave a little bit of the root in the ground, which isn't perfect. And some lawn care people might say, oh no, you've left the weed and it's gonna come back. Well, yeah, when it does, just pull it again, just pull it. It's, it's not gonna be that big of a deal. As long as you actually get yourself a thick, healthy lawn, you're gonna have less weeds coming through, which means you need to use this less and less year on year. Um, and it's a nice way to pull weeds without having to like kill them with the likes of chemicals and whatnot. So a little bit more of an eco-friendly way of doing things. Now, everything I've spoke about so far, they are the bare necessities of what you need. They are, you know, if you just wanna take care of your lawn, have a half decent lawn, then that's all you actually need. Everything else I'm about to talk about is a complete bonus. You don't need them really to have a decent lawn but you do need them if you want to have a pretty decent lawn so it takes your lawn almost to that next level with this sort of stuff so the first one is a spreader now this is a drop spreader which just means as it's traveling across your lawn it's got little holes in the bottom and when you pull the handle it allows whatever's in there to drop out so you can use this for things like granular fertilizers you can use it for grass seed all that sort of stuff and it makes your life a whole lot easier i'll try and show you on screen now what happened to my lawn about three years ago when I tried to fertilize it using one of the evergreen dispensers. I think it was the evergreen anyway. Basically, it, it was a fertilizer that came with a dispenser. So I went up and down the lawn, not really thinking I'd need to be super accurate with it. I thought I'd done a half decent job. And what you'll see is the result was really, really poor. It ended up with these big, massive green stripes, which are really thick and lush, which had you know been fertilized really well. but. Either side of those were patches that hadn't been fertilized because it hadn't been distributed evenly across the lawn. Now, if it had been, the lawn would have looked amazing, but because I used that particular product, which wasn't probably the best thing to use, it ended up looking proper, proper naff. Whereas if you use something like the Scott's spreader, then it just helps you to distribute everything much more easily. Now, something else that I think is just a bit of an extra bonus as well is a sprinkler. The reason why I put it in the bonus group is because it rains and that is you know your natural sprinkler however at times of the year like this you're talking you know end of may start of june getting into july it can be really you know dry we can have a, a bit of drought and having a sprinkler can just save your lawn from going to crispy town so this one is the hose lock um i don't even know what it's called this type of sprinkler it's the one that just goes whoosh, whoosh, like this I think this one is ideal for most lawns. So most lawns are either, you know, rectangular or the square or that sort of shape. And this, you can set it to all, you know, you can move those things there so that it makes a wider pattern. You can tighten them in the center so it doesn't move too much. And the more water you give it, obviously determines how, how far it's gonna spray the water across your lawn. So something like this, I think is perfect. Now, the next three things I'm gonna talk about are your absolute bonus balls, I think. If you wanna get yourself like a perfectly flat lawn or a super smooth lawn so you can have nice lawn stripes so that yeah, your lawn mower's not bouncing all over the place when it's riding across a bumpy lawn, then these three things, I think, are you know worth their weight in gold. So I started with the small one. It's just a small rake with a flat edge at the back. And what you can use this to do is to level your lawn so if you scalp it which means cut it so it's like as low as it can possibly be and scarify it to take out any of that thatch 
then you can dump some new soil down and something like this can help you to just move that soil around the lawn. And this makes particularly good if you're working with quite small spaces because it's only got you know a small head on it, but it's able to move that soil around quite easily, distributing it into different spaces. Now, that's good when you first dump soil out you know, of like a wheelbarrow or of a soil bag. But if you want to get a nice smooth finish, something like this can really help you to get that job done nice and easily. So you can see it's got a massive head on it. It's got a nice smooth edge and that is perfectly flat. So you can use this side for raking the actual soil around and then you can flip it over and use this side to smooth that lawn to get it nice and level, nice and flat. I've used both of these in different renovations across you know, the past couple of years, but I'll link to a video where I use this to level this lawn for the first time. And honestly, without this, the job would have been an absolute nightmare. So something like this, you're talking maybe 10 pounds from likes of B&Q. This was from a screw fix or tool station. And I think it was about 30 or 40 pounds. So a little bit more expensive, but if you are leveling, this is worth getting. However, if you want to get something that is amazing for leveling and I'm talking, you know, the best of the best, you need to be getting yourself a lawn loot. So this is the Lansy lawn loot. And basically what it is, if I just move this pole for a second, it's got all these spaces in the middle. And the idea is, is as you scrape it across your lawn, what it'll do, it'll distribute the soil really evenly across your lawn. Now I'm not going to do it now because the grass has grown quite thick. You need to almost scalp your lawn down to its bare bones before you, you use it properly. But those spaces, what they'll do is they'll allow the soil to almost get trapped within them and then it'll almost like deposit them in spaces where they're quite low. So whereas when you use the, the, you know, the regular rake, it does a pretty good job of getting it flat, this does an excellent job and also gets it done a little bit quicker too. But this does set you back a little bit this would probably probably be the last thing on your shopping list potentially because they go for around about 120 quid 125 pound i think and some of the other brands can get even more expensive too so the last of the non-bare necessities would be this and this is a knapsack sprayer so for anyone who doesn't know it's a sprayer that basically goes on your back a bit like a backpack and you walk around your little nozzle and you spray out you know whatever products you put inside I was a little bit hesitant at getting one of these at first because I did feel a little bit self-conscious at the front of the house, looking like a bit of a ghostbuster, you know, with this on my back, spraying the lawn. However, once you get over the awkwardness of looking like a ghostbuster, it's a really, really cool piece of kit. Now, what you can do with these is you can put stuff in there like liquid nitrogen, you can put liquid seaweed in there, you can put wetting agents, loads of different products, even weed killers as well. And, and those sorts of products, if you are really serious about lawn care, are key. So things like seaweed is massively important for root development and root growth. If you put a wetting agent down, that's designed to break up the water tension of each of the water molecules to help you know, more evenly distribute water into the soil. And things like liquid nitrogen, which is uh, what a plant needs to almost give it that boost of growth, to give it that accelerated growth, particularly during months now, uh, now that we're getting into the swing of the summer. So, you know, really important. If you want a really green lawn and you want to actually take care of the plant seriously, then getting yourself a knapsack sprayer is a bit of a no-brainer. Just something to mention, though, about using a knapsack sprayer. If you are using it to put things down like weed killer, then I wouldn't recommend using it for other applications such as liquid iron or uh, liquid nitrogen, anything like that. Because what you can do is if you put weed killer in this and then the next week you put liquid nitrogen on and start spraying your lawn, there might still be some of the weed killer left in the sprayer and it only takes a tiny amount to actually destroy parts of your lawn. So what you can do is what I've done is I've bought two. I've got one for weed killer and I've got one for liquid nitrogen. Now that is overkill and it's absolutely not necessary. And my partner, she turned around and said, why do we need two knapsack sprays? The first one is big enough in terms of, it takes up a lot of space on all the shelves in the garage. However, I do think, you know, if you are serious about lawn care, then it's worth the investment. So everything I've shown in today's video is what I use on a weekly basis or a monthly or yearly basis to actually take care of and maintain my lawns. Nothing in this video is sponsored. Every single thing was bought by me. And something that is quite important that I do want to mention is that this wasn't bought overnight. I didn't just go out and say, oh, I need this, 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 and this, and spend you know, the best part of a thousand pounds on all this equipment. All of these things are bought over time 
as and when I needed them. So I hope you have found today's video useful. Like I said at the start of the video, uh, quite a few people ask about the equipment that I use and talking about it in one video. So I hope that's helped to clarify why and how I use some of these different products. If there's anything that I've not mentioned, let me know in the comments below and I'll have a think of different video ideas I can have for in the future as to what sort of things I want to cover. And if there's anything you want me to go into more detail about, then let me know and I'd be happy to do so. So that's it for today's video. If you have enjoyed it, give it a like. And if you'd like to check out any of my other videos, such as my garden renovation series or any of my lawn sit videos, then head over to my channel. And if you like what you see, feel free to subscribe. Finally, Thanks for watching.